So, uh, you know, several episodes ago, we did uh, a, a tech talk on QoS, and while we got a whole lot of great feedback on that, you know, people loved it. So I, we want to do another one similar to that, and another one that kind of gets um, lumped in with QoS and why the voice world is, is interested in that is this concept of, of the VLAN. Uh, so let's, you know, let's talk about the VLAN uh, virtual local area network concept. Um, before we can really get into the virtual part of it, we should really remind everyone what a LAN is is all about. There are certain characteristics associated with a LAN, you know, maybe as opposed to a, a WAN, a wide area network. Um, and what it used to mean in the old days is not necessarily how it's used today, although technically it's all uh, the same kind of a, a concept. So um, a LAN is really just a, a, a network uh, made up of devices. Uh, typically they all share certain characteristics, like they all have the same default gateway. They're all uh, usually a subnet of some bigger network. So pic pictures some really big network and subdivide it or subnet it into smaller networks. And we think of that as a LAN. Um, you know, I do that for typically broadcast control. A lot of people say, oh, I don't need to do VLANs, I don't need to do QoS because I, I have enough bandwidth. Uh, I assumed you had enough bandwidth. That's not the conversation. The conversation is, are you able to protect the endpoints from other kinds of traffic, whether it's security related or just, again, dealing with all the broadcasts that might exist on a network. Broadcasts are real, they're everyday kind of stuff, they're needed, but if they get out of control, and they usually do get out of control on a really, really big single local area network, um, it can cause devices to uh, de degrade performance tremendously. When it comes to IP phones, we are now talking about very degraded voice, um, even so much as dropped phone calls. So we have to be really careful about controlling broadcasts. So what we do is we chop up a big network into smaller individual uh, LANs, and that helps reduce the uh, amount of broadcast. We call it broadcast control. So um, that's kind of the idea around a LAN, but now what, let's add that virtual part back in. Back in the old days when um, local area network really kind of meant a local geography, a single geography, um, it was commonly thought of as, well, I've got an Ethernet switch and, or maybe a bunch of Ethernet switches, but they're all kind of connected together as one big Ethernet switch. And as soon as I wanted to leave the building, that's when I would hit a wide area network. Well, nowadays, uh, most we have too many devices to do that, so I need a ton of Ethernet switch ports to a point where I can't put them all in one place. I might have to spread them out just based on the geographic distance, um, even in my own uh, local area network. So um, I have to get a little more creative about that, and I can't think of it as just a layer two Ethernet switch anymore. So we start thinking about things like layer three Ethernet switches, uh, and we get into more routing concepts. But again, back on the, uh, uh, this idea of a VLAN, think of a VLAN as handling it, um, think of everything that we've talked about and you know of as a LAN, but now I want you to start doing it virtually. I want you to start thinking about it where port by port by port on an Ethernet switch, I can control that to say, hey, port number one, I want you to be in VLAN 12. Port number two, I want you to be in VLAN 50. Uh, port number 16, I want you to be in VLAN 200. Um, each one of those separate numbers, and that's all a VLAN really is, is a number identification, um, can be thought of as a separate subnet or a separate LAN. Uh, so that works out great. Um, we, we call that that native VLANing, um, depending on your switch manufacturer, like Cisco likes to call those the access VLAN. Um, I always like to think of it as the default VLAN, um, where the packet doesn't have anything to do with it. It's programmed at the Ethernet switch level, and anything plugged into port number 12 was bound, nailed, tied to the access VLAN of whatever number it is, 50. Now, there's a second kind of VLANing that we can use, which we get into VLAN binding. And at that point, what we do is we are tying um, a VLAN identification uh, to the each and every packet that goes uh, in the network. So that as it's going from Ethernet switch to Ethernet switch through a device, um, I get a little tag on it, like we talked about with QoS, that says, hey, I, I'm an individual packet that belongs to a certain, uh, a certain VLAN or a certain LAN in that scenario. So um, I can do 
either, uh, again, access or native VLANs. I can do VLAN binding. There's all kinds of, of great ways to do that. But again, the fundamental purpose of it is to separate traffic um, and to reduce broadcast control. Very important when it comes to voice. Now, this is just a couple of minutes. Um, we're actually doing a webinar coming up. In, if you missed it, go to this address, maybe right here, crosstelecom.com. Go down to the bottom, look at events, and that is going to show you how you can view a replay of a webinar we're doing called Data Networking for Voice Professionals. Really cool stuff. Me and my daddyos.com shirt. Living the good life. Check it out. They call me Yeah, you know, uh, everybody kind of asks me that same question, in, like in class and, and uh, whatnot. Yeah, what it's really doing is saying that your browser, you know, your Internet Explorer, your Chrome, your Firefox, whatever you like, um, it doesn't like, it can't validate the SSL certificate uh, from the web server. So we really have to talk about what that is. Uh, and SSL stands for Secure Socket Layer. Uh, and it's really, it ultimately provides two interesting pieces of information. One, it provides an identity that says, yes, you are in fact going to a website called www.mybank.com and there's some host name information that goes along with that um, and the second thing that it provides is something that um, allows us to talk securely so it's almost like a, an encryption key so that I can lock it down and, and make it look like garbage but at the other end you have to be able to decode it so you have to have the key that unlocks what I had previously locked. Um, now when Avaya ships their media servers they have no idea what the IP address and the host name and all of that kind of information are going to be on your media server, so they have to give you an invalid media server um, or an invalid security uh, certificate. So um, that becomes you know, means you're you're bouncing up, and it says, "Hey, it's invalid." Um, realistically, in a private environment, I don't know that I care that the identification is wrong. What I'm really more interested in making sure that nobody can sniff my packets and see what I'm doing. So. Um, of the two items that an SSL certificate provides, I really, in a, in a private environment, only care about the one. Now, if you are all hung up on that, you can certainly go get your own certificate. You could go to, uh, there's a bunch of, of certificate issuing services out there that you can kind of buy a certificate if that's important to you. Most people say, oh, no, no, I'm good. As long as I understand why it's erroring out like that and what it really means, I think you're in good shape. So SSL, uh, it's a cool thing. It protects you, protects me, protects us. So here I am with Mark Wexler, uh, who happens to be our healthcare uh, industry director. Kind of cool. A little awkward, actually, because it uh, turns out Mark is a big uh, Pittsburgh Steelers fan. And of course, you guys know I'm from Green Bay, Wisconsin, where we had a little uh, battle a little while ago. Well, the best team won. They Let's just leave it at so that. Nice the best team that's won. Well, having, you having been there more often than we have, that's still pretty cool. Uh, you know, but the other thing that is kind of interesting between Mark and I, we come from, um, you know, we're technologists, but we come from two very, very different directions. I, I'm more the horizontal technologist that says, you know, our, the products, I geek out about the technology, the stuff can be applied anywhere, you know, uh, and you're, you're not. Oh, no, not at all. I mean, I look at how I can take all that geekware and figure out how to solve real business solutions. Now, for the healthcare industry, it's really around cost containment, the quality of care, patient satisfaction, but it's, yeah. it's really value to the end users using all of that stuff. See, I, I look at that, and whenever I think of you know people talk vertical markets, I just think, ah, oh, this is this is sales no. bogus. You know, isn't it just isn't it just spin? No, it's not spin at all because. Uh, when you look at the specific industry, there are very specific needs. Um, so, well, well, let's think about it this way. Um, when was the last time you were in the hospital? Uh, actually, <laughs> kind of fairly recently, about two months ago, I was in the emergency room with uh, some family. Okay. So, give me a little bit of information about it. Um, how long did you wait to get in, and how long <laughs> did you wait to leave? Well, I think everybody uh, everybody knows about the, how long it takes to get in. I mean, you get there, and you, you, you're in the emergency room, so you yeah. think it's an emergency, and clearly they, I get the impression they don't think it's an emergency, because you're sitting in the waiting room waiting to get in, but I don't know, the, the biggest pain for us is when we were, we thought everything was done, everything was over, we just were sitting there, what seemed like forever, waiting to leave. 
Yeah, so there's like this dead time when you don't know what's going on, nobody's communicating with yeah. you, and yeah. you've got no idea what to expect next, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if you think about that from a business standpoint, um, the hospital that you went to is really in the business of moving people through the emergency department. Okay. Um, and either moving them out or moving them in, in other words, to a bed. They want another patient. Uh, right, they yeah. want another patient. So it's sort of like the supply chain. You've got to move the raw, raw material through it, yeah. um, and they need to do everything they can to do it as efficiently and mm -hmm. as uh, uh, productively as possible. So if you don't think they're communicating with you, they're not communicating among themselves either because they should be able to know when you're done so they can move you out or move you in. Okay, okay so that sounds fair, I guess. I, I, I'm still struggling with how does that impact you know, the phone world, the PDX, the, you know, the telecom department. Well, think about it this way. If you're the nurse, if you're the doctor, what's the difference between voice and data? None. It's all information, right? Uh, yeah, okay, okay. So if your critical results come back, if your lab tests come back, if whatever came back that said, hey, you're good to go, why do you have to wait to get to a computer terminal to see that? Why couldn't you be automatically notified on your telephone? Uh, and as yeah. importantly, now think about this for a second, David. Um, if I'm the nurse that's responsible for you and I'm busy, why do you have to wait for that nurse? Why can't somebody who is that nurse's backup be notified of that information, okay. get to you, and help you through the discharge process? So things that we've talked about in the past with like Avaya's automatic notification systems, like voice portals, you're saying I can automate some of those processes. Exactly. And have it so, you know, normally it's a, hey, I, I'm waiting for this doctor, I'm waiting for this nurse. You're saying just notify the system and have the system find an appropriate person who's available. We call that presence, by the way. Yep. Uh, and do it that way. Yeah, exactly. So think about the technology underneath it now. It's not just notify you by a specific device. It's notify you based on the device and the means that are most efficient and productive at that point mm -hmm. in time. So it may be the telephone. Could be a pager. Hmm. Could be a text message. Um, could be any number of different vehicles that combine this whole notion of voice and data into a notion of information. Uh, okay. Well, that's okay. So that starts making sense. You start applying the same products that might be applied to any industry, but finding out, well, why would they be applied here? Why would they be applied there? What, what are you going to do with this technology once you have it? So that starts to make a lot more sense. Mark, we are running out of time, man, but um, I want to thank you very much for coming in. Uh, again, go Steelers, go Packers. But It's uh, a pleasure. We'll get you next year. Sounds good. Thanks. We'll catch you next time, guys. So one of the things we've talked quite a bit about on this show is the idea of how, how cool SIP is, and not as a replacement for a voice signaling protocol, but as a way to, to allow some, some uh, bare agnostic kinds of, of infrastructure. And what I mean by that is um, I can use SIP instead of H.323 that is you know, just good for voice. SIP can be good for anything. Um, I don't care about the bare path. Now let's provide another real life example that just happened. Um, you may remember a via or conferencing. Um, current release of that is 6.0 for the standard edition. Very cool. Runs on system platform. It's like five or six different virtual machines all running on one piece of hardware. Very cool. Um, before that, it was Meeting Exchange. Um, so if you maybe remember that name, that moved into Avaya Aura Conferencing. Well, Avaya just released Service Pack 1. Um, you know, which now allows the SIP-based conferencing server to, that it was already really good at doing audio conferencing and uh, web collaboration, but now adds the ability to do video conferencing. Yes, you heard it, video conferencing. Again, think about what you needed in the old days to accomplish that. I'd need a big old MCU or a, some kind of a video bridge, very processor intensive, because the device always had to deal with the bearer path. Well, now in the world of SIP, all I have to do is, uh, all I'm do dealing with is the signaling of all of this stuff. So the bearer path becomes pretty easy to handle uh, because I'm just reusing a lot of the existing engine and technology that we had before. So uh, Service Pack 1 is, um, I can't say it's just a patch, it's not. It's, 
uh, requires a pretty uh, lengthy install. But um, this gives me a great opportunity to take my existing investment, my existing purchase. I don't require additional right to use. Um, I do need to be SIP enabled to, to make this work and tie in and tie it. But I can start talking to all of the, um, the video supported devices that Avai has, like Flare and One X Communicator and the A1 uh, uh, A1000 series devices, AAC. You know, so I think everybody knows I live here in Minnesota right now, but um, you know, I do take a lot of abuse for being a Packer fan, and I don't know. Yeah, sure, I, I was born and raised in Green Bay, Wisconsin, from birth up until college. You know, then I had to go up to Michigan to deal with all the Lions fans, and I had to go down to Illinois for grad school, and had to deal with all the Bears fans. But you know, so I've got some tough skin, and I don't know. I guess in, in Wisconsin, football is kind of a big deal. It's hard to say exactly. I, you know, you see it every once in a while. I mean, I think most people are have, have their small town heroes, you know, and well, I suppose, you know, when we've been there as many times as we have, you know, four Super Bowl titles, um, you know, how many championships, I can't even count anymore. That's, I guess it's a big deal. I don't know, but you know, guys, it's, just remember, it's not everything. And hey, there's always next year. Where's my green M&Ms? Take your pick. <laughs> Which, do you want them in alphabetical order? What are, you, <laughs> what are we looking at here? This is Pillow Talk by Dave Lover. The lighting. Would you like to? Oh, baby's got good lighting. That's <laughs> 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 just cool. That's all, folks. <laughs> yeah.